Income tax 2022-2023. Name and address. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information comes from the Form 1040 Tax Year 2022 Instructions, Lined Instructions, which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. So obviously the IRS needs to have the name. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. And the address. I need an address too. As well as the identification number, the social security number on the tax return. So you gotta print or type the information in the space provided, top of the form 1040. Typically, if you are married, filing a separate return. Yeah, and maybe I'll file a federal income tax return. Enter your spouse's name in the entry space below the filing status checkbox instead of below your name. So remember, we talked about the filing statuses before. We've got the single, we've got the head of household, we've got the married, married filing separate. So if you're married filing joint, then of course there's going to be a space for the two spouses involved and the related social security numbers. See social security number. If you're filing married filing separate, then the IRS still wants an indication of your spouse so that they could basically check on the other side, seeing if the spouse then filed a tax return and you would think that they would be claiming as well married filing separate. If you filed married filing separate, indicated who your spouse was and the spouse filed married or something other than married filing separate, you would think that uh, that would cause problems on the IRS side. You would think that their machine would automatically be able to kind of pick that kind of problem up. Tip. If you filed a joint return for 2021 and you are filing a joint return for 2022 with the same spouse, be sure to enter your names and social security numbers in the same order as your 2021 return. A return. An income tax return. So in other words, generally, if you're a married filing joint, you're going to have the first line and then basically the second line. So it's going to be the, the one spouse and then the second spouse. Traditionally, that would, of course, be the husband uh, and then the wife oftentimes, but you could put it a uh, reverse on the form 1040. If you flip the order, meaning you have the husband and then the wife, and then you have the wife and then the husband and the following year, not technically wrong to do that, but it could confuse the IRS when they're trying to compare uh, one year to another year. Oftentimes they're doing that basically with an automated kind of system. So you can throw kind of like the machine off which you would think would be trying to compare the same line to the same line. So name change, what happens if there's a name change? If you change your name because of marriage, divorce, etc., be sure to report the change to the Social Security Administration, the SSA, before filing your return. So if you get married, you change your last name, or you get divorced, you change your last name, or you just like some random name and you change your name or whatever, then you've got to let the Social Security Administration know they should be uh, talking with the other government entity, the IRS, and so that when you file the tax return, they need to be tying out the name to the Social Security number. If you turn something in that has a name that is different than the social security number, that's probably going to cause problems. You might not even be able to file it. It might bounce back uh, because it won't go through the filing uh, system and, and whatnot if you're trying to electronically file. So uh, this prevents delays in processing your return and issuing refunds. It also safeguards your future social security benefits. So obviously, well, not really obvious, actually. When you're paying into the social security system, that's the payroll taxes with a W-2 employee or your self-employment taxes with a Schedule C, then you're paying in the tax at this point in time and your benefits at the point of retirement age will be dependent in part, if it's still around, if it hasn't fallen apart by that point, will be dependent in part on how much you paid in. So 
uh, you don't want to confuse the social security system and think that you're like two different people, right? Because but I guess we're just two different people. You want, you want to make sure that they're assigning all the money that you put into the social security program so that they will maximize the calculation of your benefits. So make sure if you're changing your name uh, for any reason that they still are knowing who you are from the social security side of things and will properly and maximizely calculate your social security benefits upon retirement age. So add uh, address change. If you plan to move after filing your return, use form 8822 to notify the IRS of your new address. So you can look that form up 8822 to let the IRS know where you are at. If you're getting a paper return, a refund, for example, and you told them to mail you the check, it's gonna cause a problem uh, if you moved. But if you're getting an electronic transfer on the deposit, it might not be as big of an issue. And obviously when you file your next tax return, you will be using your new address, but it would be best to notify the IRS where you are because you know they like to correspond by snail mail. We got the PO box, enter your PO number only if your post office doesn't deliver mail to your home. Foreign address. So if you have a foreign address, enter the city name on the appropriate line. Don't enter any other information on that line, but also complete the spaces below that line. Don't abbreviate the country's name. So they don't want to confuse the IRS, you know, because this is the U.S. tax law. Bill. Thank God, because tax law was never your strength. I really. So you start being in other countries, you're just going to confuse them over there, make it all very specific. Follow the country's practice for entering the postal code and the name of the province, uh, county, or state. So you're going to use whatever, obviously, structure they have set up to identify where in the world you are. Death of a taxpayer. See death of a taxpayer under general information later. So if you have a, uh, the death of a taxpayer, we'll dive into that at a future point. We talked about it a little bit in terms of just your filing status, if you're married filing joint and the taxpayer dies, they're gonna die in the middle of the year. And so obviously you're gonna usually file married filing joint uh, for that year. And then after that year, that'll be the final return for the taxpayer typically. And then after that year, you see what happens from that point going forward.